today we got a Honda Civic here. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity to go over um, how to open up your headlights, talk about the oven settings. Uh, we'll go into using the Morimoto Retro Rubber later on in the video. Uh, this is a Honda Civic. It just came in. We just unpacked these lights. So we're going to go over the procedure about first opening the lights and getting prepared, uh, you know, for the for to crack these open. So uh, I got a few different tools here. Most of you guys will probably not have all of these things, but um, a few things that you definitely need. You're at least at a minimum going to need a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, ideally, some spreading tools. These are lock ring pliers. Uh, panel pliers might work, um, but these help spread the seams apart. And um, I'll go into why those are useful uh, in a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is, oh yeah, also gloves will help. These are silicone gloves. These are made for baking. A lot of people just use standard mechanics gloves. Anything to help with the heat transfer. You know, when they're out of the oven, if you're not doing this day in and day out, the lights are going to be pretty damn hot. And it's going to be hard to hold on to them and, and do what you need to do safely. So. I recommend at a minimum standard mechanics gloves, but these are good. Nothing sticks to these gloves. You can find them on Amazon. They're just silicone baking gloves. Uh, we've been using them for about a year. You could see there's pretty much nothing on them. But um, so I'm going to get into uh, you know getting the headlight prepared. So anytime uh, you got the light, you know have something underneath it so it doesn't scratch because you're going to flip it upside down. And the first thing you want to do is if the light has any of these screws. These screws hold the front lens to the back housing and that keeps everything tight. A lot of lights just have these clips. This one has both. It's a good quality light. We like seeing the screws and the clips. It just helps hold everything better. And at the end of the day, you'll probably have a better seal. Um, so we're going to take out the screws. I suggest having a little tray somewhere where you put them so you don't lose everything. The light's going to get taken apart in many pieces, so it's easy to to lose these little screws, put them in a safe place. Of course, you can replace them later on, but it's easier now than finding replacements later. So all the screws are removed. I like taking out the bulbs. There's nothing wrong with leaving the bulbs on. If you have a light that has LED modules, uh, HID ballast, any kind of module on it, you can leave them, you can take them out. Um, one thing I want you guys to know on the newer cars, if you got LED modules like a BMW, we've been in the situation where we got them mixed up. So, you know, and then the car doesn't recognize them. So newer cars is a different story, but we actually recommend leaving all that in place. It's easier. The module is safe. We're putting them in the oven at not that high of a temperature. Nothing's really going to melt. I've taken off the caps because we're going to be removing the original reflector for a conversion. Um, and this also helps the, the heat get inside and it, um, you know, makes the temperature uniform on the inside, which helps the sealant get back to, uh, you know, a good temperature and that will help us take the lights apart. So while uh, I was showing you guys this front portion of the video, the oven has been preheating. Um, this is a standard baking oven. Uh, our temperature is 240 degrees. Make sure you preheat it. You're gonna see there's nothing preheating, there's no heat light on there. This is important because if you throw the light in while it's preheating, you're gonna be left with a, uh, you know, possibly with a melted light. The headlight gets to a very hot temperature and you can have a melted lens, any kind of piece inside the headlight, like an amber reflector, it might melt or deform. So make sure it's done preheating. You can see the coils are not red hot. We're going to throw the light into the oven. I'm going to do this for an extra minute or two, but you can see the headlights right on the, you know, the oven rack. There's no reason to put cardboard in there. I've seen people suggest a lot of different things. Close that door quickly because you can see the oven already went back into preheating mode. We had it on, you know, open for only a few seconds, but you know, you don't want to let all the heat out because then it's going to jump up in temperature and it could deform your light. So, we're going to wait for this light to get out of the oven and then we'll show you exactly what we do to get it split open. So the light's about to come out of the oven. Uh, one thing I did not discuss was time and uh, temperature. You saw my oven was set at 240. You're going to see a lot of different things on the internet and uh, you know, proceed at your own risk as they say because some people do 275, some people do 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 
We do 240 degrees for everything and we're always baking for 20 minutes at a time. I like to go, you know, the low and slow method. Other people are going to do a higher temperature, maybe 275 for let's say seven minutes. You know, to be at a lower temperature is always going to be safer when it comes to def deforming anything or melting anything or just having a, a bizarre issue where, uh, you know, the whole light starts melting. You know, you don't want to get into any of that. It's always safer to go at a lower temperature, but you can't go too low. You don't want to be at 200, you know, 190, because um, then you're going to be using a lot more prying force and you're going to chew up the housing. So you can see this light's coming out in about 15 seconds. I'm going to remove this light and we're going to discuss uh, you know, how to open it up cleanly, safely and what to do once you're done cleaning it up. So, as you can see I'm not using the trusty gloves that were in the, uh, that were in the video. I'm used to the... One thing I want to get into is, you know, most of you guys are going to be using a, a flathead screwdriver. We always start on the bottom of the headlight because we don't want to see any kind of pry marks along the top edge. If you're going to pry it up or chew it up, which uh, we really don't do, um, you're going to do it at the bottom. So first I'm going to loosen these tabs up a little bit. I like to start on the corners um, because the corner has a lot of strength. It goes, you know, from the bottom to the side. You're going to stick the flat head in and you can give it a twist. I personally use the spreaders. So once you get in there with the spreading tool, you're going to see, make sure your tabs are all flipped up because once you're spreading, you can rip them right out and then you'll just be left with screws. In some lights that have only tabs, you don't want to rip a tab. So you can see the beetle spreading very nicely. Um, you can hold it open, kind of keep moving over. So we got a tab here, I spread that open and we're just getting past it. So don't work your way so quickly into that corner, try to keep going. If you don't have this spreading tool, like I said, I recommend it obviously. If you don't have it, you're gonna be using a flathead. You're gonna put a lot more gouges into the light. So now you can see it's coming up. Any kind of butyl that is stretching, try to get that with your finger now or with your gloves because once it goes onto the chrome, it's just more cleanup time. You can also use a flathead. You can see this tab is holding me back. So at this point, the butyl's clean. You can see it's not really sticking out. I get it with my finger. It's not that hot to work with. And I'm separating these two pieces. You can see it kind of stretches. Get it out. When you flip it upside down, I like to press down the seal a little bit all the way around. Because if you're taking out the inner housing, you don't want it, butyl interfering with uh, removing of the inner housing. It's going to be harder to get the inner housing out and it's going to be harder to get the inner housing out and you're going to have a mess. Next thing I like to do, you can see the butyl, you know, it's kind of all mishmashed around. Um, I personally like to flatten it down and that's going to go into our next part of the video when you're laying down the Morimoto Retro Rubber. So right now we're using a flathead. The flathead, you know, is proportioned in size to the channel and it's pushing all the sealant down to what's called the ground floor, the ground level. This gives you a nice consistent foundation for the new sealant. So it's taking all the stuff that's on the side and it's giving you a beautiful, nice level surface to work with. We're going to get into the retro rubber next, but as you can see, it's already very smooth all the way around. And we'll get into the next part of the video shortly. So we're getting ready to put the uh, Morimoto Retro Rubber in. We've had this sitting in the oven for uh, just a few minutes. You can put it in there right with the, uh, the cardboard. And the purpose of putting the sealant in the oven is simply to soften it just a little bit. Because when it's cold, it likes to stretch and then it'll kind of stretch back. Um, so you can see when it's uh, warmer, it stretches a little bit and the key is only a few minutes at the oven. So your oven's preheated at 240. It's ready to go. You're ready to get your headlight sealed right back up. You can see the, the bead is pretty thick and we're going to stretch it out into a thinner, thinner, uh, thinner bead, uh, because a lot goes a long way and you don't need a lot. The more you put it in, the more you're going to be cleaning up. It's going to become more of a mess. So this is the factory sealant that's been pressed down. And we do that so it's nice and consistent like we spoke about earlier in the video. 
and we are getting ready to add the new uh, beta sealant and uh, we're going to show you how that's going to go right about now and you want ideally you want one piece for the whole thing um, so you can stretch it out just a little bit and if you keep it in one long two, uh, you know, one long uh, bead, um, that way it's not gonna start splitting apart and you're gonna have gaps in the seal. So you want to be able to throw it in there one long string, let's say. And when you're putting it in, since it's warm, it'll stick to the other seal and it'll stay in place. If you're putting it in cold, it likes to shrink and it likes to, it likes to get into um, you know other places and it's not going to sit well so you're literally kind of feeding it in there nice and consistently so you can see that's our new roll right there try to get it as low as possible if you can so this doesn't take very long to do i mean the retro rubber should be added on every single set of headlights that's open if you can if you don't you might get lucky and you might be fine. I mean, uh, before the sealant was around, we didn't use uh, we didn't use anything. And then uh, it was windshield sealant and other types of butyl. Now this is a specific type of OEM grade sealant that is made for headlights. So we're gonna try to stretch this all the way to the end. And we got pretty lucky with that one. That was a good guess. So now we're gonna put this in the oven. You don't have to, but we like to. So we were actually, actually had the other side already in the oven. Rich, if you wanna get it. Um, we're going to get the other headlight out of the oven. The other light's been sitting in there for about 10 minutes now. The sealant's already put in place. And what we're going to do is simply press it down. This gets the sealant down to the lowest level. It makes it nice and smooth, consistent. And consistency is key with the sealant because you want it to ooze out perfectly all around the lens and the channel and this way you get a nice bond when the lights made in the factory you know the robot the machine whatever you know it's a perfect amount of sealant they're not doing it by hand so they give you just the right amount to seal the light properly in this case we're going to use we're essentially using a little bit more to guarantee that the seal goes through you know, gets into every little nook and cranny, and that way you're not left with any air pockets or any gaps where water can enter the housing. And, you know, after this part, we're pretty much all set to go. So it doesn't even look like we added too much, but there's a little bit extra in there. It's been spread apart. So this conversion is ready to go. Everything's been cleaned up. Your chrome should be clean. Lenses should be clean. And at this point, we're ready to throw on the inner housing, and we're going to do a test. So we use compressed air. Uh, actually, we use a blower. We used to use compressed air. It's a little blower that we use. And this is our process for pretty much all the, uh, the conversions. You know, everything's been checked over before we made this video, so we know going in it's gonna be clean. And the reason why we turn it on is to make sure that there's nothing inside. And that way we can kind of look through if we see any dust. The light tends to bring out all the little imperfections, and that's gonna help us decipher um, if everything is clean. And since we've checked this, we know it's good to go. We're gonna throw it in the oven for 20 minutes, and we'll show you the rest of the process in just a few moments. So we got the Honda Civic ready to come out of the oven. It's been in there for 20 minutes. Um, we got the spring clamps here. This is what we use. You're gonna want some clamps. I've seen people use bungee cords and all different types of crazy things. Get yourself some clamps, they're dirt cheap. Got our tools ready. In this case, it's just a, uh, a Phillips head uh, on an impact driver, but I recommend just using a regular hand tool. We got our screws ready. The reason why, you want everything to be ready once the light is getting out of the oven because uh, once it's cooling down, it's not going to bond as well, and the lens is not going to seat as well. So the key is have it in there for a while. We do 20 minutes at a time, and uh, you know you got to work. Uh, you got to be ready to work, you know, quickly and efficiently. So we use paper towel, a pad. You're going to flip the you know headlight on the lens. You don't want to scratch anything, especially if you're doing this in your house. So the light's going to come out. 
Uh, Rich has got some gloves on. It's important to wear the gloves. Once again, you're gonna burn yourself. Uh, headlight's been in there for 20 minutes, as mentioned already. And we're gonna actually press the headlight against the corner, uh, this little wall that we have over here. And this is gonna seat the lens fully back in the channel. So you're basically just pressing the whole lens and you're pressing it in. And this is gonna get it a little bit deeper uh, on the corner. The rest of it is really, you know, by hand. Um, so you can see there's a huge gap here and we gotta work quickly to secure everything. So, you know, at this point, you can press it in a little bit further by hand. Um, you can throw the spring clamps on and you can even spread the spring clamps. So you can see how that's been closing there. And the goal is to get a little bit of sealant coming out. We added the extra sealant for a reason. You can see as the spring clamp goes on, because the light and the sealant's so hot, it's gonna actually suck its way right back into the back housing. Little sealant's coming out, don't panic. You want that to be happening, it's a good sign. And you're gonna wanna make sure that all of these tabs are fully seated. It's seated when it's over the edge like that. Every single tab should be seated. We know this light has screws on it. We're actually gonna flip it upside down once all the tabs are in, and we're gonna put the screws in. So these are the tabs that I was referring to, and this light's probably got 10, 10 of them, which is really solid, uh, and it's got maybe five, four screws aside. So between the tabs and the screws, it's really gonna hold everything nicely. So once again, you see the sealant coming out, don't panic. We're gonna show you how to take care of that shortly. If you work with the sealant when it's too hot, it's only gonna become messier and stringier and it's not something that you wanna do. So we got our screws ready and there's all a few locations for the screws that we're gonna zip them into. Usually on the corners, it's pretty self-explanatory. Get the screws in there tight, but don't over tighten them. When the plastic's hot, it'll has a tendency to kind of rip right through and thread, uh, you know, cross thread or just uh, keep spinning. So you wanna get it tight, but not too tight. Spring clamps are still on, as you guys see. You wanna keep those spring clamps on pretty much until the end. You know, I mean, within probably a 10 minute window, the light's gonna get back to, you know, uh, almost normal room temperatures. So this process needs to be done quickly. If you feel like you don't, you know, have a good seal or seating of the lens, throw it back in the oven. There's nothing wrong with going back in. Happens to us, we have to throw it in maybe once or twice. This light's, you know, brand new. It's not really been opened up before. So these, you know, we usually get a one shot deal. So we're checking the tabs. Everything is seated. The tabs are in. The, this headlight's not gonna spread at this point. Uh, the, the lens is gonna stay seated. So we can take these off. If you're just using tabs or you have an aftermarket light, I would say keep those, you know, spring clamps on. So at this point, we're kind of waiting for this, uh, the sealant to turn a little less gummy and we'll show you why because you're essentially going to be picking the sealant off and you're going to be making a little ball with it and the sealant comes off cleanest when you're using the sealant to actually pick off the excess sealant so it's going to kind of come off in a ball and uh, if you have enough of it we'll show you uh, we'll show you how it kind of comes off and cleans up you know, you can use Goo Gone and we do that sometimes, but it just takes t more time and messy. You have a short window of time right here to get this done properly. So you're actually gonna use the ball of sealant and you're gonna pick it off. Sometimes it comes out stringy and you know, it just means the sealant's still a little bit warm. You can see how clean that's coming off though. If it's too hot, it's gonna be too stringy, it's gonna be messy. It's actually gonna leave more residue left over. And then you're gonna hit that sweet spot where you got maybe a few minute window where you're cleaning off the remaining sealant and it's coming off really nice and you actually remove it fully. There's no goo gunning needed after this. As long as you're not making a huge mess, um, you know, you're wearing the gloves, the headlight lens is clean. We usually goo on the lens, uh, to be honest with you, and we'll buff the lens to make sure it looks best it can before it leaves our location. But this process, you know, takes a few minutes. You're picking off any excess sealant, like here. And, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, how long do I have to wait before I can wash my car or get out in the rain? This sealant, as soon as it cools down, you're good to go. Run it through the car wash. You'll, uh, you'll test, you know, your own ability 
and see how well that seal is. But most of the time, if you follow our procedure, you're gonna be fine. Uh, if you have a good quality light, uh, some of the aftermarket lights are, are just known to leak and, and have issues. But in this case, we're picking off any excess seal. And you can see it hasn't come off in all locations because we're not perfect. And we added sealant more by eye and we stretched it. So some areas might have had more than others, but you can see how nice and even, you can see actually see through the lens and it's pretty even all the way across. We're looking for the consistency. Um, so we had to pick it off in a few spots, but not all of them. You can see it's hanging off over there. So once again, you're using the sealant to pull off the remaining sealant. Once it cools down, I mean, if we didn't get all of it, we'll throw it back in to do another round of cleanup, but this is pretty much it. You're ready to go after this. Um, you're going to be doing a few other things. You're going to be making sure the backside is fully sealed up whether, with a weather grommet or a new cap. You might need some silicone, but as far as the main seal is, uh, you know, the main seal is in question. I mean, this is pretty much the procedure that you want to follow. If you guys have any questions, you can contact us at info at lightworks.net. We have the sealant, we have all the parts for the conversions. And we'll be happy to give you any information that you might need to get your job done properly. And uh, you can always count on us for honest feedback. For any products, anything you see on the website, we'll steer you in the right direction. All right, have a nice day and thank you for watching.